Hello, Hi. everyone. Hello, Patrick. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm going to start this one off, Pat. Um, congratulations on your new contract. And when I first saw that cross Twitter, I was so excited that you were coming back. How excited were you to be coming back and putting on that Clipper uniform again? Oh, I'm super excited. Uh, I mean, anyone who's been around me the last couple of years, uh, dealing with the knee injury, uh, I mean, this, the city has uh, opened his arms to me, accepted me for who I am, allowed me to be myself. And uh, uh, I mean, I have nothing but love for the city, man. I just want to, you know, with that contract, I want to do as much as giving back as I possibly can. Uh, and I think the city deserves it. Uh, let's go uh, get the mic in the front row here to Kurt. And just remember, say your name and affiliation, please. Hey, Pat, Kurt Sandoval, ABC 7A. Congratulations as well on that deal. Shortly after that, uh, a lot of big dominoes fell for this team. Describe the emotion you were on to just get the contract and shortly thereafter to see Kawhi join this franchise. Well, I think from, um, uh, thank you. Uh, God is good, of course, for the, for the contract. But I think uh, from, a, uh, from a team standpoint, I think when we both, uh, when we both got the news, I think it was uh, I'm almost like we couldn't, I, I couldn't believe it. How, how did you feel? Yeah, I was uh, I was asleep, woke up, like my phone was blowing up. I thought I got traded. <laughs> I thought I, I cause I I've been traded before. I know what that feels like. Phone starts blowing up, two thirty in the morning. Um, but no, it was. I mean, it's exciting. Obviously, you know that's that's what you want. You wanna. You, we knew we had a good group from last year, and we added pieces, and um, you know we're excited about where we're at. Helen had a question here. Helene. Helene Elliott from the LA Times. I'd like to ask you both. Last season, one of the great strengths of your team was that it was like this junkyard dog mentality, scrappy, no superstars. Now you've got two superstars in your midst. How does that change things? Or are these guys already shown willingness to kind of blend in and, and you know, be one of the guys? I, th I think it's the same thing that you just said, that scrappiness attitude, but on steroids. But not real steroids. <laughs> However you want to put it. Landry. Uh, I mean, yeah, they both fit the mold. It's I don't I mean, they, I mean everybody that we added comes in and has the same the same mentality uh, from the top down. I mean, that's just how it is here. In the back, uh, Josh Martin, close up 360. Uh, Pat, I'm going to direct this one to you. Uh, with the additions, it looks like a big part of your identity this year is probably going to be on the defensive end. And considering your, your, I guess, your reputation on that end of the floor and your understanding of that, um, how important is it to develop sort of an off-court chemistry that can then translate into what you guys do on the, on the court from a defensive perspective? I think, first off, I think the, uh, the first, first part of your question, I think it's going to be the totally opposite. I think, you know, uh, we're going to lay our hat on defense at all, but, uh, you know, from if I was a coach and I'm looking at this team and I'm looking for one person to help off of, it, it'll be me. So I have to be ready to, you know, take the necessary shots or make the necessary plays. So uh, when it comes to defense, that's going to be the easy part because that's what we lay our hat on. But uh, for the most part, we want to get, you know, as close together as we possibly can, that family, that family environment that we had last year and, uh, and see, what it, see what it takes us at the end of the year. Landry, you were pretty much contributing to the team as soon as you arrived last season. Now that you're here and you're here for the beginning and the start of the season training camp and, and fishing trips, um, how much do you appreciate being here from, from day one? Yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's, a, it's just a different feel here um, just with how, how much time we all spend together um, going on fishing trips and going to Rams games and whatever you know we're, we're spending a lot of time and it's just I'm just glad I get to be a part of it glad that the cards fell the way they did um, and that I got to come here and join this great group um, I mean I'm just excited to you know be here from the from the beginning to end mm -hmm. you know and I'm you know, I'm just looking forward to it Cameron Buford Los Angeles News Observer I got a question for both of you guys Mr. Beverly you touched on it a moment ago about giving back to the city why is giving back important to you and then Landry what did you do to, this summer to improve your game to become a better player? What specifically did you do? Thank you, guys. Um, for me, I think uh, giving back, you know, 
people would have gave back to the community I was from, maybe, you know, the death toll wouldn't be as it is right now. Uh, I think this is a real thing that's going on. I think that uh, giving back uh, doesn't solve the problem, but it definitely helps it. It, uh, it gives them inspiration to, to the kids out there that do want to play basketball, that come from the neighborhoods that I grew up in, that you tell those guys that, you know, uh, someone like me made it, you guys can do it also. So uh, giving back is a step, and, uh, you know, uh, taking a small step is better than not taking a step at all. Um, and if your question for me uh, about what I did to get better, I mean, you know, I, I kind of, based on last season and the end of the year in that playoff series, I kind of expect how, I was just trying to look at how teams were probably going to play me um, and trying to put me in a box saying I'm just a shooter. Um, and I'm, I mean, that's not the case at all. Uh, so my biggest thing was just developing, you know, and continuing to grow uh, in the other aspects of my game, sharpening and polishing those things off. Um, putting it on the floor. I know people are going to be flying at me thinking I can't put it on the floor, but I'm going to, you know, be able to have to put it on the floor and continue to get better defensively, working on my body, getting stronger, um, just making sure I'm in a place to to play 82 plus uh, and be the best I can be for, for this group. Landry's been in the gym, obviously. Andrew? Uh, Andrew Greif, LA Times. For both you guys, uh, Montrez was talking about the pickup games that have started after Labor Day. You guys have been playing for several weeks now. Just what do you guys learn about this group in that last month or so? That Landry can shoot. <laughs> you didn't know that before? Uh, not the way he can shoot now. <laughs> I mean, honestly, but uh, this is the group that we really enjoy each other. Um, we can police each other. We can coach each other. Uh, it's, no, it's no big eyes, little use. It's no ego. Uh, the low man on the totem pole, if they're, I mean, if that's the quote that you guys can use, or the top guy on the, whatever. Uh, it's none of that with us. It's uh, you guys have a problem, communicate, nip it in the bud, get over it. Let's get better. Let's be great. Uh, and that's been our model. I think my thing, biggest thing I've noticed is just how many options we got. Like, you know, you, I mean, Pat talks about it all the time. To me, just, you know, whatever night it is, could be lose night, could be, you know, Pat could be hitting Kawhi. Paul, um, Trez could be feeling good. Like whoever it is, we can ride with them uh, that night, and and that's just it's just crazy. You look around the gym while we're playing and just see how much talent we got, um, and just what options we have. And, and like he said, unselfish, no high man, no low man on the totem pole. Uh, we're just gonna go with whatever we feel like is best that night and and help us win. It's a question over here. Yeah. Adam Oslin to AM570 LA Sports. Pat, uh, we haven't seen three wings since you guys added PG and Kawhi this good on a team, maybe since the mid-90s Bulls with Harper and MJ and Scottie Pippen. So what are your goals or your expectations on the defensive side this year? Uh, I think it will be hard this year, of course. Uh, we're not the surprising Clippers that we were last year, you know, surprising people. People know exactly who we are, the targets on our back. Uh, so we're going to get everyone's best punch. It's up to us to be uh, ready day in and day out. Defensively, it's going to take care of itself. We've been playing defense since we were a small child, so that, that won't change. Uh, now it's just time to get to work. So, Right here. Steve Finley right here, Culver City News, Culver City Observer. Question for both of you. How is it playing for a coach like Doc Rivers? I mean, Doc's great. Uh, you know, he's been in every, he's seen every aspect of, a, of an NBA organization from player to front office. Uh, so he gets it. Uh, if, you, if he's telling you something, you know it's coming from the right place. Uh, he's hard on you, expects a lot of you, uh, but, you know, can talk to you like a, like a player, like a teammate almost. Um, but, I mean, it's, you know, when I got traded and got to play for him uh, last year and, and, and this year, I mean, he's, he's just been, he's been great. I think to add to that, uh, Doc is uh, he's a coach who preaches uh, doing the right things. And, uh, and for me, behavior is greatness for me, and greatness is behavior. The, be the better your behavior is off the court, the better basketball player you you'll, you'll become. And that's his message, and that's been his message. And, uh, you know, it's really synced in with this group. The more we mature as, as, as individuals and as a team, we become that more dangerous on the basketball court. Lewis Keane, Real GM. Landry. Are you anticipating playing more point guard this year? Uh, and what's your sense of how much more you'll be called on to do that? And uh, for Patrick, uh, 
as a leader of this team, bringing two new all-stars into the fold, how do you expect your role to change uh, as a leader? Um, I think, I mean, my role, I mean, I don't, whatever, whatever is needed of me, I feel like I can do. Um, and, and I expect that to change on a night-to-night -night basis. Uh, those decisions are going to be made by Doc, you know, as far as point guard or whatever. I don't really care. We got, as far as I'm concerned, probably four on the court at any point in time. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of almost point guard by committee, maybe. Um, but, I mean, for me, I'm not too worried about how many minutes I'm going to play at this position or that. Uh, it's more about just what is needed of me on a night-to-night -night basis. Uh, what can I do to help us, help us be the best we can be and help us get as many wins as possible? That is a hell of an answer, too. Thanks, Pat. Trying to be like you. Respect. Uh, I'm sorry, what was the last part of that question? Oh, nothing changes. Uh, we, are, we all, even Landry, it's his second year, but he's a leader also. We, are on, we all a leader in our own little lane, whatever lane that is. Of course, each lane is different. Uh, and uh, we just try to be the best in our roles that we possibly can be. And uh, with that mindset, that'll, that'll take us a long way. Next question. Mr. Beverly. <laughs> right here, my man. Good to see you, baby. You too, bro. Uh, Corey McGetty with Fox Sport. I want to know, Pat, like, what were some of the things this summer that you worked on? I saw a lot of your workouts with Jordan Lawley and Handle by Randall. You know, taking into account you had that knee injury, and now this was a full summer of recovery and we're actually working on your game. So what were some things that you can take away from this summer? Uh, like you said, I was healthy this summer. I was able to train at a high level. Um, I think off the court, behavior. I mean, I, and I'm, you're going to hear me say this a lot this year, behavior is greatness. Uh, even with my teammates, family, and friends, my, my behavior has changed. You know, I'm, you know, you guys want me to be this, uh, this, you know, this guy in the corner who's just doing this, you know, whatever. But uh, I'm just trying to harness that because that does affect me, you know, when you do second in the NBA and technical fouls. And, and that's, those are the type of things that we don't want, you know. So uh, just trying to control that. And the best I do controlling that, everything else will kind of play out for itself. Pat, how do you think your, your dominating skills uh, playing paintball will translate to the basketball court? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I still got scars to show mine. I, I think I was the only guy running around without a shirt on, so I guess yeah, I'm kind of psychotic. Not surprisingly, Pat Beverly went next level playing paintball. Um, next question over here, Ramona. Um, Pat, I just wanted, I know you'll tell us the, how, this, how this actually went, but we've heard various accounts of this fishing trip you guys all went on. Um, <laughs> Paul's supposed to be this professional fisherman, but Denise caught the biggest fish, and then Kawhi was maybe next in there. So who, who actually won that competition? That's my first question. I and think I'm I'll let Landry answer that. Oh. <laughs> was it, the question is what? Is, who who actually, was it like fish? a competition? Like Paul who, said it was competitive. It was, yeah, we all had like a bag with the number on it. Um, I was out there just to be on the boat. I just want to be on the water. So I definitely was you driving the boat. I, I, they didn't let me drive the boat. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't let me drive the boat. <laughs> uh, no, nah, yeah, it was a competition, though. Denise did catch the biggest fish. Um, that was crazy. Uh, no, nah, but it was a lot of fun. I mean, it, it got com you, you can feel it. It got a little competitive. It was a good time, though. It was a lot of fun. Um, and, and my other question was, just for both of you, is we, we all, Kawhi Leonard's been a force in the NBA for a long time, but he's sort of new in town since high school, really. How, what have you got to know from him? People say he's a funny guy. He said he's that, too, right? What, what have you got to know about him so far, just as a, as a person? Dude, it's funny. Funny as hell. He's, really? <laughs> he is funny. He works extremely hard, too. Uh, him and PG. And Mo. I mean, you can go down the list. I mean, I'm going to be honest. We have a really, we have a really good team. Everyone here knows that. We, uh, but it starts tomorrow. Uh, we're not gonna. And I'm gonna take the pressure off everybody right now. We're not gonna talk about championships. We're not gonna talk about any of that right now. We're talking about one day at a time, and that starts with media day. It's good to see you, good faces, good people. And tomorrow is time for business, which is practice. And uh, we're gonna try to get the most out of each day. And if you have that mindset and do that, by the end of the day, end of the year, you put yourself in a good position to win a lot of basketball games. On that note, thank you, fellas. Patrick Beverly, Landry Shamet. Drop the mic, baby, there you go. Controlling myself. <laughs> Thanks so much.
much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports analysis and highlights, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.